Hello everyone, Beard Reads Books here and in today's book review I'm going to be reviewing a little history book on Agincourt 1415 by Michael K. Jones. Uh, as you've probably guessed by the title it's a uh, like history review on the Battle of Agincourt. Not a thick book so it's easy to get through and very well written and what Michael Jones does is, rather than looking at the sort of the military tactics and all the rest sort of behind the Battle of Agincourt, he sort of looks more at the the psychology of like warfare and the sort of psychology of Henry V. He was like the king who led the Battle of Agincourt, and he does a bit of a like historical review of like the psychology behind the battle and all the rest uh, one thing i quite liked about this is it was it's a very easy to read book very informative as well and you know it's not a dull dry book it's a you know, very good to read book very interesting and uh, there are over the last few decades there have been sort of like people like historians who've like looked into the Battle of Agincourt and put forward a, a case that they, they believed that at the actual battle the English did advance a bit like they made a bit of an advance and then towards the French side and Michael Jones in his book he puts forward a case that he doesn't believe the the English did sort of make an uh, an advance first. They it was the French that advanced first, and what Michael Jones does is he looks at accounts contemporary to the battle, and he uses those accounts to put forward a, an explanation as to why he personally believes it was the French that advanced first, not the English, and. Round about the time this book was written, this was written in 2005, and round about the same time, there was other authors, like historians, who were putting, a for, putting forward a case where they believed the English army and the French army at the time were very similarly matched in size. What Michael Jones does in this book is he puts forward a, a belief his belief that the English army was a, a much smaller army than the French army was. And again, he, when he's putting it forward, his, his belief in the disparity in sizes of the armies, he uses various sort of like historical accounts and all the rest that he's that like, what the word I'm looking for. Yeah, he uses account, historical accounts that, he's referred to in forming his belief system that the French army were greater in size to the English army. So it's not simply a case of him saying, this is what I believe. It's also him putting forward a case of, this is what I believe and here's why I believe it. And these are the sources, like historical accounts and other sources that I've been referring to that have led me to believe what I believe so that's so that's one thing I like about this book is the fact that he refers to sources that have helped him form his opinions and beliefs now, I must admit the fact that this was a very easy to read book it sort of, kind of being helped encourage me to sort of read more history books not more like Sort of delve a bit more into history and hopefully find books that are as well written as this one because I said that I could know more about history my knowledge of history isn't the best so this isn't this one has helped encourage me to think yeah I'd like to read more history books so and it's good when a book inspires you to do that so what I would say is if you if you want to read about the Battle of Agincourt and learn more about it I would say that 
this book, Agent Court 1415 by Michael Jones, is a, a good book to start with. I definitely 100% recommend this one as a bit of an introduction to the Battle of Agincourt. So if you're interested in history and British battles and all the rest, I would definitely recommend putting this one on your wish list. So yeah, it gets a big thumbs up from me. Well guys, thank you for watching. Look, I hope you enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you in the next one. And in the meantime, take care.